for some time now, my duties in London have kept me from being able to go out among the people and bring to them a dialogue with Sir Edmund Anderson. I've come to your century now to do this. You see, a dialogue is a 16th century literary form in which I will create an argument uh, uh, between two fictional characters. They will argue upon the point and then eventually arrive upon a solution. So, without further ado, finally, I bring to you a dialogue with Sir Edmund Anderson. Now, to make sure that this is something that everybody can grasp easily, I shall choose a very common subject that we all know intimately. English law. Yes. Since time in memoriam and the signing of the great pardon, Magna Carta, pardon, there has been I've a got a this. of English right. rights. There's um, I can't dig in this. Does anyone got a shoe or a shovel? Anyone at all? Good master. I, not now, my lord. I I'm beg a, your pardon. Not now, my... Edmund Anderson? Jack Bottoms. Edmund Anderson, it is so good to see you. <laughs> I'm a knight, Jack. Take a knee. Edmund Anderson, so good to see you. <laughs> For God's sake, Jack, what are in town? I just came into port today. Aboard what ship? The Intuition. In what capacity? First mate. Oh, I'm sorry, who died? That hurts. <laughs> What's in the bag, Jack? <laughs> what bag? Nothing. Nothing of consequence. Nothing that I'd care to share with a member of the law. Oh, look, Queen! No! There's something on your shirt. Your shoe's untied. Boots! Damn! What's in the bag, Jack? <laughs> Edmund, I was raiding the 21st century. You were what? I was on a trans-chronological thievery spree. <laughs> what did you thieve? Edmund, in the 21st century, are the most wonderful things they have. This! <laughs> what is that? Privy tissue. Privy tissue? Privy tissue. What's it for? Well, think of the last time you were in the privy. Well, standing or sitting? Sitting. Right. When you were done, how do you feel? Oh, ten pounds lighter. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> no, how did your posterior feel? Well, we were a bit dirty, I saw. Oh, oh, wait a minute. They use that... Oh, is it sanitary? Extremely absorbent. To apply. Soft. Quilted. <laughs> Give me. You wish. Oh. <laughs> now, do they have a lot of it? Edmund, they have so much of this in the 21st century that they use it to decorate their neighbors' homes on festive occasions. <laughs> they throw this over the neighbors' trees. They, they throw this over the neighbors' trees. Filthy, filthy wasters. Saving every square. Never using a corn cob again. Husk. It's a corn husk. That's why it hurts. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Let me tell you something, Jack. <coughs> Tell you something? Yes. They don't know how to dress to walk in public. <laughs> what? Oh, I've discovered it. It's true. <clears throat> Here, I shall show you. Madam. Mm -hmm. What is your name? Hers? Yours. Mine? Yes. Kimberly. Kimberly. Excellent. Very well. Kimberly, I would have you meet Jack Bottoms. Good day, Kimberly. Jack, I would have you meet uh, Kimberly. A pleasure to meet you. No, Jack, you have to look at her to greet her. I cannot, Edmund. Why can you not? She is a fair woman. Even a gentleman would not mind so much as a look. Her elbows are showing! She's got naked elbows! <laughs> are you trying to tell me that in the 21st century, they are so indecent as to go out in public showing their soft, supple wrists, oh. their delicate forearm, oh, yeah, God, God. and their sensuous elbow skin? Oh, yeah. You want to touch her elbows, don't you, Jack? You simply want to reach right out! Really stop it, Edmund! <laughs> you know as well as I do in the 16th century that if a man touches a woman's elbow skin, they're engaged. Indeed. Edmund, why won't anyone touch my elbow skin? Jack, focus. Right, fine. You know what? In the 21st century, they have toilets. What's a toilet? They're akin to our privies, but they are made of porcelain. Porcelain? From the farthest cafe. Mm -hmm. That must be phenomenally expensive. Everyone has one. Everyone? Everyone. Do you know what they do on them? What? They, sh they sit on them, <laughs> and when they're done, they pull a lever, and whoosh! Whoosh! Do you know where everything goes? No. Away. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't you tell them what we've got? Uh, oh, uh, we have a chamber pot, which is a large brass bowl. It is about, oh, so large in size. It's a spittoon. We're doing our business in a spittoon, Edward. The, the only way you get whoosh out of that is when you hand it to your manservant, and he looks at it and goes, whoosh! <laughs> and then he carries it to the nearest window and throws it outside, sometimes on someone walking by. I got it in my mouth. Right. I can tell you 
their child appearance. Oh, come now, their children look perfectly happy. Oh, really? Yes. Well, what do you think about this? Head on a stick! Oh, no, 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 no. You see, this is a children's toy, and it's a sweets dispenser. Decapa candy. <laughs> <laughs> parents, if you think that this is funny, go to Trader's Gate in London sometime and look at the pikes there. You can tell them that Sir Edmund said. Demon! That's a gargoyle and an imp! But now, what would you do with this, Jack? I would put that on churches to keep the evil spirits out. I would use that to ensure a good harvest. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, they give this to their children to play with as a toy. They give their children Lucifer dollies as playthings? Yes. What do they do to punish them? Pierce their tongues? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right, Edmund. Smell my breath. Oh, the dung heap. Yours is no better! You know what? In the 21st century, they have... Wait a minute. In the 21st century, they have... Where's the tooth is brush? The bag of holding, is they it? They have this! The tooth is brush. The tooth is brush. The tooth is... Well, they call them tooth brushes. What? But really, people, you've got one brush and multiple toothes. It is the tooth is brush. He's right, you know. But you take this tooth is brush. And this minty cream. Minty cream. Minty cream. It sounds perverse. Not at all. You see, you put the minty cream on the toothpaste brush, you brush your toothpaste, and when you're done, fresh breath. Yeah, but, but doesn't that make a lot of business in the mouth? No, no, you see, they spit out all of the minty goodness when they're done. They spit out all of the minty goodness? Filthy, filthy wasters! I'm swallowing it. <laughs> Minty goodness. Minty goodness. All right. <laughs> Continue. Right. It's not hard. I can tell you something. But these gentlemen have lost the art of gentlemanly behavior. No. They no longer know how to woo a woman. No. It's true. You know, it's really well known that only poetry can truly reach the heart of a woman. You learned that from your wife. No, but yet. But that's beside the point! <laughs> a round of applause for Rita, please. Rita, I ask you to stand here. Now, I am a married man, so this is for demonstration purposes only. I'll show you what gentlemanly behavior is all about. Come with me and be my love. And we shall all the pleasures prove the valleys, groves, hills and fields, woods and sleepy mountains yield. The shepherd swain shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning. These delights, thy mind may move. Then come with me and be my love. That was good. Wow. <laughs> she was swooning right there. <laughs> but, Lady Rita, I have been speaking to the people of your day and age, and they have been kind enough to provide me with tablets that have your poetry written upon them. <laughs> what? What's more, these tablets come with this. What is that? I have no idea. And if you ask anyone under the age of 25, they don't know either. Hey. Hey. <laughs> well, yes. you can tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. And we're staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive. <laughs> this is crap, Edmund. Oh, it is. Wait, 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 Rita. I'm sorry, I came prepared. Let's give him another chance at least. <laughs> no. Um, do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? Do you really want to hurt me? More than anything! Right, all right, all right, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Rita. 
I was told that no woman can resist the charms of Billy Squire. Squire, nearly a knight. Excellent. Spread your ear pollution far and wide. Keep your contributions by your side and stroke me. Ah! <laughs> it's dirty! Um, um, you owe this woman and the rest of us an apology. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Could I escort you back to your seat? That's fantastic. Um, I don't want you to stroke me. Well, I mean, I do. I mean, I do. So, Rita. Get a touch my elbow skin. Jack! All right, fine. <laughs> my God, it really sounds. Don't read it. Now. All right, fine. You know what? Do you have that map that you always carry? Oh yes. Yes. Why don't uh -huh. you show it to these people and tell them what's wrong with it? What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong. Th th no, there's nothing wrong with this map. You see, there is fair England green, and there's France, and there's Spain. Where is America? Where? Where are the Americas? Oh, you mean the small chain of island about the size of my own pinky, yes. Small chain of islands the size of your pinky. So you mean to tell me that we could sail west from England right through that little chain of islands the size of your pinky all the way around to Father's Cafe? Well, uh, yes, no? No, 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 no. Oh. I'll have you know that in the 21st century, they have map making down to a science. Whole thing is still a problem. <laughs> I will have you notice that America, oh. America is not a chain of islands the size of your pinky. It is in fact a continent the size of my fist. <laughs> pinky fist. I would also like to point out that in the 21st century they are kind enough to tell you that to circumnavigate the globe, it's a risk. <laughs> well Jack, you push me to my worst. But first. I can tell you something. Yes? I can tell you that they are all discourteous. Come on, they look fine. They're smiling, they're laughing, they're applauding. No, no. And don't deny it. Imagine you're going down the highway in your great steel beast, hurtling along at unnatural speeds, when suddenly somebody takes precedence over you. Well, the first thing you do is you make sorts of strange hand gestures. <laughs> and then you call each other vulgar names. Really, what's an ass hat? <laughs> and then you make some sort of strange face, like you're the last free member of some suicide death cult. Uh, all right, I'll get something that you can understand. Please. Now, imagine you're standing in line for an ale. That I can do. Okay. Now, a woman steps in front of you in line. <gasps> now, if she were from my century, if you're of higher station than I, I would simply say, Madam, it is my honor to yield my place to you. If you're of lower station than I, the worst that she would get would be, Madam, that were my spot, thou ought not to have taken it. What do you think they would say? Oh, this is easy. He would walk up to her and say, Get out of my way, you dumb bi- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Admittedly, you're a little discourteous. However, we were just waiting in line for an ale. Why don't you tell these people where we get ale in the 16th century? Oh, simple. I just send my manservant down to the cellar to take I'm, I'm sorry, not where you would get an ale, with someone like me, where the common fellow would fetch an ale. You go to an ale house. Hmm. But, which is a large shack, which is tacked up against the side of a larger house. You go inside and you pay the innkeeper a tuppence when you go in. And then he or she will come out with a large bucket filled with ale, and then she'll slosh it into a trough that is set into the middle of each of the tails. And then you take your mug and you simply dip in and you take as much as you like. Oh, oh yeah. If you don't have your own, you simply use one of the ones that they've provided for you. It's been on the table for some weeks. Un unwashed. You know what? In the 21st century, their ale comes from taps. Taps? Their ale comes out cold and frothy. Frothy? They don't have to chew their ale. And oh. Their ale comes in handy dandy take it with you containers like this. Oh. What's more, on the top there's a lever. Do you know what happens when you pull that lever? No, what? Whoosh! Whoosh! Do you know where everything goes? No. Away. Oh. <laughs> Edmund, it comes in pints. It comes in pints. I'm getting one. Wait a minute. What was that? <laughs> sippy. Oh, Sippy. Oh, talks amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh, God, nothing would ever get done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Toothpaste and beer! <laughs> There's technology. <laughs> Five. I found this broadside in a rubbish bin. Yes? And I found this. Who is that? That is Queen Elizabeth. God save the Queen! God, God save, save the, the queen. queen! Now, can you tell me exactly who that is? I know not. You see, that is a long lineal descendant. Queen Elizabeth the Second. God save the Queen! God, God save, save the, the queen. queen! You see, upon the front is her son, Prince Charles. Oh my God! That is a really good case against inbreeding. Indeed. I mean, look at those ears. One swift wind and whoosh away. <laughs> now, this next to him is his wife, Camilla. Oh my God, she does not use her tooth as brush. No. Nope. <laughs> Edmund, Edmund, if I follow you correctly, someday that woman is going to be Queen of England. Wait, there is hope. I like hope. Know you, the prince did have a son who but a year past was married. Oh my god, she is so pretty! <laughs> Edmund, why can't we elect her queen? God, Jack, you don't elect a queen. You don't elect your rulers. That's not how it works. Well, why not? Why not? I mean, think about it. Think about a form of government where, where the best, the brightest, and the most beautiful are, are democratically elected for the people, of the people, and by the people! <laughs> it would never work! <laughs> oh, uh, moving on. All right, we talked before about poetry. Now, I want to talk to you about the speed of communication. Yes? I have a letter that was sent from Queen Elizabeth's own hand from London. It was sent by post to me, but three weeks hence. On the road, from London to me. Only three weeks by post. Three weeks? Indeed. You know, in the 21st century, they have this. What's that? It is called texting. Anywhere on the globe, right to here, instantaneously. Three weeks, instantaneous. I believe that that means that I win. Really? Yes. Well, let's see how these read, shall we? All right. Ah. Uh, my dearest Edmund, a weight does lie heavy upon my brow. Return to me, my dear muse of reason, and you your love shall prove, and I be mine. Oh, I've been summoned. That's good! Well, she's the queen. She's good at that. All right, fine. Oh, yours. Let's see yours. Where are you at? <laughs> Lols, colon, close, parentheses. <laughs> what the hell does this mean, people? I think it means I win. Oh, fine, you know what? In the 21st century, they have air conditioning. We have a bucolic agricultural society. They have antibiotics. We've got a lower crime rate. They've got... Who are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> we can spell words any way we like it. They have the Flintstones chewable vitamins. <laughs> 10 million strong and growing. 10 million. And what's more, Edmund, in this you've got these little orange children and little purple puppies and little pink ladies. Oh my. Oh my god, I can run around the earth! Oh, Jack, steady on, Jack, steady. Edmund, when do they invent Ritalin? Oh, as soon as they discover that childhood is inconvenient. Right. <laughs> we have the great age of discovery. They have. Come on top there. The Oscar Mayer fully cooked bacon. Oh, bacon. <laughs> With cooking instructions on the back. <laughs> Edmund, why do you need cooking instructions for something that's fully cooked? I have no clue. Bad example. Oh, it is. <laughs> Jack, the truth of the matter is, the 21st century has some absolutely wonderful things. They do. I know. But you have to give them back. I'm not going to give them back. Oh, no. You have to give them back. I just stole them this morning. You're going to disrupt the space-time continuum. Oh, what? Look, Jack. <laughs> the only time that any of us really have is our own. 
That's profound. Thank you. But you know what? That is not what Doctor Who said. Well, when you return with me, well, then you can have it. All right, but until fine. then, I've got to give them back. Fine. Hold the bag. Right. Well, 10 million minus one. <laughs> Folks, the people of your time that have fully cooked bacon and need cooking instructions, <laughs> you tell them that Jack's pulling for them. <laughs> Buy you a nice pomander. You'll get there someday. Pornography. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, who's to say you didn't invent it? Really? Really? Really, really? Really, really. Hold this. Oh, excellent. Oh, it's squeezably soft. What are you doing, Jack? What am I doing? I'm going to town! <laughs> <laughs> Folks, tonight at my house, cabbages and prunes. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Yeah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Jack Bottoms. And I am Sir Edmund Anderson. And, and really, really whose time, time is it anyway? <laughs>